The purpose of today's video is to show Centrum uh, empirically Central Limit Theorem. So Central Limit, limit Theorem says two things. First of all, take repeated samples S small n from a population and average them. Okay, so a bit of uh, mathematical notation, S small n stands for sum of some observations from x1 to xn, and x bar stands for average. So we take the, the sum, we divide it by number of observation, and we get an average. Okay, so let's uh, repeat one more time. Take repeated samples from population and average them. The thing here, you'll notice it says population. So the question is which population? Well, it doesn't really matter. It can be population of any size and population of any shape. Okay, so for instance, I'm interested in sampling from this population here, the, the triangle population. And, and you might ask me, what is actually this triangular population standing for? And I can say, for instance, there are trees in the forest. Okay, so um, population of trees in a forest um, amounts to 45,644 trees with a mean height of 66.8 meters, okay, and standard deviation of 23.5. Now, now that's a very big forest, yeah? Okay, so I've got this forest um, distributed like a like a kind of triangle, yeah? You, you can see here that there is more big trees and there is small trees because the red bars just stands for uh, stand for population numbers. Okay, so I go to the forest, I close my eyes and randomly I select samples. So the first sample I selected um, was 5, 7, 20, 79 and 100 meters and I average it. Okay, and the next thing I do, I go and select the second sample um, and I do it likewise, I average the sample, I get um, 80.2. For the first one, I got 42.2. The next step, obviously, is to record these values, yeah? Um, and the best way to do it is kind of some kind of histogram. So, for instance, the 42 would be somewhere uh, here. The 80.2 would be, say, somewhere here. And I just keep doing it over and over again. I keep um, taking samples of five. I average them, and I just re report them on a histogram, okay? Here, here, there, everywhere. And you will notice that as you do this over and over and over again, you actually get something like a normal bell-shaped curve, yeah? So this is like a normal distrib our normal distribution. Now that's, that's amazing because uh, the parent distribution was a triang triangular type of distribution. And we have here, by, sa by taking samples of these trees, averaging them out and plotting them on a histogram, we actually got some kind of bell-shaped distribution. Okay, so that, that leads us to the second part of the central limit theorem. After you've taken these samples, averaged them and reported them on a histogram, you then have to uh, observe the following that the distribution of the sample means, okay, that we, the averages of these um, samples, also called sampling distribution of the sample mean, will converge to normal distribution uh, with uh, mean mu and standard deviation equal to standard deviation of the population, maybe I will put p here, divided by square root of n, where n is standing for number of observations in the sample size, is our sample size, it's not the total observations, it's just the number of observations uh, in the sample size, and I'm sure you recall we had five observations in our sample size, yeah. Let's prove it, okay, because it's kind of amazing, because it says independently of your original parent distribution, if you take repeated samples and uh, plot them, you will get a normal distribution, and the thing about this, the mean of this dis distribution will be equal to the mean of the parent population, okay? So we are saying here, um, mean of, of the sampling distribution uh, will be equal to mean of the population, okay? And I'm kind of showing it to you already here in, in, this, in this graph. We've got a mean of 66.8, and guess what? When we s um, did the sampling distribution of the sample mean, we get exactly the same mean. Now, the central limit theorem says, unfortunately, standard deviation of this sampling distribution will not be the same as the standard deviation of the 
parent population, it will be it will be equal to the standard deviation of the parent population divided by the square root of n. So here our n was five, and we take square root of this. We take the standard deviation of population, and guess what? This is our standard deviation of the sampling distribution, and it happens that it's 10.5. It's exactly as the uh, central limit theorem predicted. Okay, here I just drew the population um, with sample size one. So this is just like like um, representing the population, the real, the true population. Okay, my population is 46,203 trees in the forest. Okay, and now look what's going to happen when I increase my sample size to five. Okay, when I increase my sample size to five. I'm just reproducing the experiment I, I demonstrated in the in the in the do document. Okay, so I'm taking samples of uh, five, and I average them, and I just want to see what's going to happen to my distribution. Okay, because the original distribution, parent distribution, is like a, a triangle, triangular one. Now, ready, steady, let's go. Okay, so what has just happened? Wow, that's amazing. Um, the mean of this sampling distribution of sample size with five observations averaged is giving me a mean which is exactly the same as the mean of the original parent distribution and the standard deviation which is the same as the parent parent standard deviation but divided by the square root of n where n stands for sample size that's an amazing result and uh, in the next video we'll prove the central limit theorem more rig rigorously um, i.e. mathematically